Hello, this is Mr. Neil Wright, it's a consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in yet another demonstration video of our recently developed wax scope. Um, the wax scope is due to be launched in early autumn 2022. So if you are interested in learning more and purchasing the wax scope, please do um, email info at clearwax.co.uk. So we've had a client attend with bilateral, fully occluding, really dense earwax. So it's quite a thick, dense consistency. And very early on, I um, instilled some olive oil spray. Um, and I'm actually suctioning this whilst the spray is in situ. Um, when I first started using spray during the procedure, I used to let it soak and then drain and go back in. Um, with an endoscope, sometimes that is the best method that because the lens of the endoscope can get blurred a bit, but when you with with the wax scope, it's like a, a handheld microscope as such. Um, so it's more of an otoscopic microscopic view. So the lens is not in, in, in the ear. Therefore, there's less blurriness. That's one of the advantages actually of the wax scope. Now this patient's got quite a narrow ear canal entrance. I don't know if you saw it when I entered the ear. Um, so but you can just see how much we've widened it using the wax scope. And so I'm using the 4.25 millimeter speculum. We've got a smaller size, 3.5 mil, uh, and two larger sizes of 5 mil, which is probably going to be the standard size, and the 5.75 millimeter. And so we're just trying to, I'm just trying to loosen this wax off the canal wall, and it was quite a severe impaction. Um, I think I have some still images that I'll upload at the end of the video. Now, if you continue to watch and uh, see the view of the eardrum in both sides would be it's quite a breathtaking view actually um, it's you can see just how powerful uh, the wax scope is in terms of providing magnification and clarity and focus um, it's probably one of the best views I've had so far using the wax scope so just put some more oil here I'm just at the base of the ear canal I'm just trying to lift you can see this is dead skin um, and this is the wax that I'm on now but prior to that you can see as a a ribbon of dead skin and that skin's there you can see it's just to the right of the suction probe 60% um, of earwax is actually dead skin and the skin in court is uh, amalgamates with an oily sweat in the ear this sweat is produced by uh, modified alkaline glands so the same glands that uh, are found under your armpit so it's a uh, an oily sweat and also an oily lipid secretion called sebum um, by the sebaceous glands and that's similar to it's sebaceous glands on our forehead, well, in fact, they're the same. Um, so it's the same compound. And all these three ingredients uh, combine and amalgamate to form earwax. So um, we're just trying to go around the periphery of this wax plug, and you can see it's really, really impacted. And in a moment, I'm going to uh, revert to an ear hook. And the ear hook does come to the rest of you, actually. You can see uh, that, that, that oil softened. The, the surface of this wax, the lateral surface, but then once that wax, that soften has been removed, you've got another layer. So it's one of those procedures where you have to be patient. And I'm just trying to, and it's lodged, that's the other thing you can see. I'm just trying to wriggle this out. And it's coming forward slightly, but it's still trapped there. It's not going to fully release. I've got it more mobile there. So it's, it's no longer attached to the canal walls. The, the skin adhesions have been removed, but still somewhat tricky bringing it out of the air. It'd be interesting if any viewers are watching their videos and they are using loops or a microscope or any other device to remove wax other than the endoscope. Um, just, just drop a comment and just, just um, you could let me know how you, you feel uh, the view compares to your current technique of removing wax. That would be a very useful guide. So I'm just scanning around the top of the ear and you can see I've just adjusted the focus there. And I'm just gliding in with the hook. I'm getting to the roof of the ear canal here. And I'm embedding the tip into the core of the wax. Now, this is the patient's left ear. we still got the right ear to do. The right ear was more complex for here, so it took a bit longer. So again, do, do stay tuned. So I'm slowly bringing this wax plug forward. Um, some of the wax did come out, but at the same time, the ear hook did also just dissect through the wax. It cut through the wax like a hot knife through butter. So I'm just going back further in and slowly bringing this forward. You can see 
that I'm each motion of bringing the wax plugs forward and I'm going back, I'm trying to bring it again, trying to release it and extract it out. So I think I've got the hook right behind now and this is where I'm trying to pull the plug out in one go, which I think I did manage in the end. That's quite a large piece there, and I think this is the second piece. That got trapped at the entrance, and that's because, as I mentioned, the entrance is quite a narrow entrance. So I'm just getting the hook in and behind, and then I'm kind of just literally prizing it forwards. There's the big mass, and so I've got some still images at the end. Now, if you look at this eardrum, we're going to dilate the ear canal. I'm going to turn the, the wax get towards the eardrum, and I'm going to adjust it in focus. You can just see how focused and clear that is. And I would have to say the view from uh, the right here is actually more spectacular. But you can just see how focused we can really see all those capillaries and blood vessels on the handle of malleus. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Now we're on to the patient's right ear, and again, the entrance is narrow, but just straightening it using the speculum. And this is where I think the wax scope will benefit uh, a lot more people, possibly, than the endoscope. Now, the eye clear scope endoscope, um, the endoscopic view is, is as I've said several times in the past, and I'm sure I'll continue to say, it's unparalleled. And there's nothing that can compete against an endoscope, more particularly the, the eye clear scope that we've developed, which is been developed for the purpose of wax removal, so we've designed it in such a way where it provides the optimal optics for wax removal. Um, but people do struggle in terms of dilating the ear canal, widening it, because there's no speculum with an endoscope. You're having to use the tip of the endoscope to manipulate the ear open and stretch it open. So this is where I think the wax scope comes into its own for those people that can struggle, and there is a few, people, fair few number and percentage that do. Um, this is far, far more user-friendly. Now, of course, you lose the field of view. You unfortunately, you can't have the specular and the field of view. However, um, you do gain uh, user-friendliness. And I, I would say in terms of focus and magnification, I think the, the, the wax scope actually is really, probably is more superior than the, the endoscope in that respect. So similar to the patient's right ear, just put some drops in there. I'm just trying to wriggle this. And you can see I'm beginning to mobilise it, but... It's quite a tussle, this one. And again, I'm going to have to use hooks. I have the same box here, hook in a moment. So I'm just going around, going more to the roof of the ear canal. This is to the top right. And then this is more central and then back down. I'm just looking for a weak, a weak spot. And um, quite often with wax plugs, if you remove it inferiorly and you wriggle up, because it, it, they can get trapped in the inferior recess. If you kind of manipulate the wax plug up, uh, and away, it, you, if it is trapped in the inferior, so you won't be able to see because that's more deeper in the ear, it can release itself and then come and come out. So, I'm just going to adjust the focus there. I'm going to go in with a hook, and you can just see the view it provides of the hook, it's crystal clear. So, I managed to get some out there now. The, the wax here is probably a bit more uh, uh, softer, so. Although it is bringing some wax out, it's also cutting through it somewhat. So because I've just sliced through it, I thought I could go back in with a suction probe to see if I can bring out some of the smaller pieces. And sometimes that's why I use an ear hook. I use an ear hook not to necessarily remove the wax in one solid piece, although we did manage that. And I think I'm going to, in the end, inevitably remove it using the hook. But uh, sometimes you use the hook just to chisel through hard wax or slice up softer wax and you're going back with the suction. So you're using the tools in combination and that's that's key. So with that first ear, the left ear, I don't think I'll be able to remove that with suction alone. If I did, it would be quite a long procedure. So that's where the hook did, did assist.
what sometimes can be a bit easier with the wax skater is when you're using mechanical instruments. And mechanical instruments, when I say mechanical instruments, I refer to the ear hook, Jobson horn, or forceps. So because the ear canal is quite, so you're straightening it using the speculum, and you get a clear line of sight actually. Um, so you can possibly go in a bit deeper with a hook or Jobson horn with forceps. With an M skater, it's a bit trickier because obviously the insertion, uh, although you are straightening the ear canal slightly with the endoscope, you're Sometimes it's hard to get past the second bend with the hook and a scoot confidently. So, but I think with the wax scope, it's probably a tad easier. So again, I'm just going to stretch the ear open. So I'm just going back in with the hook, I'm trying to go to the back part of the ear canal and get in and behind and separate. You can see I'm separating it from the back part of the ear canal there. And as I am, I'm coming back out the hook. I think I've just put some more oil in there. And this is a good trick and tip for anyone performing ear wax. When you've got this consistency of wax, do put some oil in. It does make a big, big difference. I'm just going to tease this forwards. So we're just near the entrance now, and uh, as I said, the patient's entrance is a bit narrow. It's, it's narrower than the, the, the width or diameter of the wax plate, so I'm just stretching the ear open again. Back in. You've got to get a good suction grip, don't want to... You've got to be careful, you don't come away too quickly with the, the suction probe. Uh, if you come away too, too quickly, you'll lose the grip, and then the wax won't come out as well. But I think I managed to get this out in a big plug in the end. Okay, I'm going to stretch the ear open. And go into the back part of the ear canal under the roof, into the plug. So again, I'm just going to separate it. That's where the hook's quite good. It's got a, a slim diameter, a slip, but it can be used in tight spaces like that. Again, so this is slowly but surely coming out. Yeah, so we're near the entrance now. So these, the wax are coming out in pieces. But I think I do manage to get the majority plug out in a solid mass. And this patient's, the right ear in particular, is a lot more bendier than their left ear. As I'm, I'm trying to, with this wax plug, I'm trying to navigate around the bend. So as I'm getting a suction grip, I'm bringing it away from the eardrum, but also got to curl it to, the, to, to, your, to your right ear so it gets around that second bend. And then... I'm just telling myself, don't lose the suction grip as I've got a good grip. And you can see this plug is enveloped in dead skin. And do wait for the view of this eardrum in particular. I thought the left one was great, but um, it was just stunning how clear and vivid. Uh, I think that's what my clinic manager, that's the phrase that she used today, when she saw the eardrum in the video, it's just so vivid. So there we are, just stretching the ear open. We're going to adjust the focus. It's just, it's just breathtaking uh, view that is. Of course, we played this back to the patient. She was in awe as well about how clear her eardrum was. And I've just got some still images. And I've just got a pencil tip as a reference point. You can just see how dark and dense that wax is. Um, so, again, if you're interested in the Waxscope, um, please feel free to uh, send us an email. We can add you to our mailing list. The email address is info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.